हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी काइंडली सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेल आइकन टू रिसीव द नोटिफिकेशन फॉर द अपडेटेड वीडियोस आई एम गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस फर्स्ट प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम चैप्टर फोर इन दिस प्रॉब्लम वी आर आस्ट टू डिटरमाइन द फोर्सेज इन ईच मेंबर ऑफ दिस लोडेड ट्रस्ट राइस सो दिस ट्रस्ट इज लोडेड एट दिस पॉइंट बी सो देन वी विल हैव फोर्सेज इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ दीज मेंबर्स राइट सो if the force at this joint b is 2.4 kN and we are asked to determine the force in each member so then there is no need to find the reaction force in at a and c uh, we can find the forces in these two members that is ab and ac members directly so to solve such kind of problem we have to start from that joint where at least there is one known and two unknowns right so here at this joint b we have the force unknown in this ab member and the force unknown in this bc member right so let's say that if if this is my force which is given that is 2.4 kN right so the forces in ab and bc member should be in such direction so that they should make a closed triangle since this joint b is in equilibrium so whenever the system is in equilibrium so the summation of forces is equal to 0 or we can say that the ve the vector sum of all the forces at a particular joint will be equal to 0 right so if if the summation like the vectorial sum of the forces is equal to 0 so this means that uh, if there are three forces so then those three forces should make a closed triangle right so let's say that this is my force and this ab member right so the the direction of this force will be similar to the direction of this member right so if i place this here right so this means that the force in bc should be in this direction right so if if we draw that force let me draw that force that is parallel to this bc member so if i put it here right so then this force should be in this direction right and and this should be coinciding its is its head should be coincided with the tail of this 2.4 kN right so now from this closed triangle since there are three forces right so when the system is in equilibrium so these three forces should make a closed triangle right so the uh, direction of the force in ab member should be in this direction right from this uh, uh, triangle right this is the ab member force and the bc should be in this direction right so this is ab direction and that is the bc direction so now we can say that this is bc and this is that ab so now if i draw a horizontal line here right so then this ab force is making 30 degree right so this is 30 degree right and if i draw a horizontal line here right so if this is 30 degrees so then this is also 30 degrees right and similarly this bc force is making 60 degree with the horizontal right so this means that this angle is 60 degree so this means that this whole angle is 90 degree right so this whole angle is 90 degree right so this means that this is a right angle triangle so now we can find this ab since this is a right angle triangle so if if we consider this angle right so if this is 90 and if this is 30 so then this angle is 60 right since this whole angle is 90 so 90 minus 30 so then this angle is 60 right so now uh, the magnitude of this ab should be equal to 2.4 cos of 60 degree right since this is the uh, part of this uh, right angle triangle right so this ab is the cos component of this 2.4 kN right so we can say that this ab will be equal to 2.4 cos of 60 degree and similarly we can say that bc is equal to 2.4 sin of 60 degree right? since this is a sin component similarly uh, if we use the sin's law so we can find the magnitude of this ab and bc as well by using the sin's law right so if we apply the sin's law so then this bc divided by the sin of this opposite angle right so sin of 
60 degree right since opposite angle is 60 degree equals to 2.4 divided by sine of 90 right so sine 90 is 1 right so we can say that bc is equal to 2.4 sine of 60 degrees divided by 1 right so bc is equal to 2.4 sine of 60 so both of these uh, will have will give us the same answer right and similarly if we want to find ab by using sine's law so ab divided by the sine of the opposite angle right so this angle is how much so this is 90 plus 60 so then this will be 30 right so this angle will be 30 since the the sum of the three angles in a triangle is equal to 180 right so 180 minus 90 minus 60 so then this will give us 30 right so then this will be sine of 30 and this will be equal to 2.4 2.4 divided by sine of 90 right so this will be sine 90 so again sine 90 is 1 so then a b will be equal to 2.4 sine of 30 degree right so this magnitude and this magnitude will remain the same now when we solve this so then a b comes out to be 1.2 kilonewton and similarly b c comes out to be 2.08 kilonewton right and now as we can see that uh, this force a b is acting towards the giant so this means that this member a b is in compression right so this means that we we will write that this is the compressive force right if we isolate this member a b right so then this force is the force on the giant right so the uh, as a reaction the giant will apply the force on the member in the opposite direction right so this member will have force in this direction right from both the joints so this is the compressive forces right so this means that a b force is compressive forces similarly this bc member force is also acting towards the giant so this means that this bc uh, member force is also the compressive force right now if you want to find the force in this ac member so then we have to consider this reaction force at this point c right so let's say that this is the reaction force in this direction and let's say that this is cy if this is our positive x and positive y direction right so then we have to assume the direction of this ac in such a way that these three forces should make a close triangle right so and this bc uh, force will be acting towards the giant right at this point c this will be acting in the opposite direction since this bc member is in compression right so if it is in compression so then this member should apply the force on this giant c and similarly this member should apply a force on this giant b right so if this is the case right so if i draw uh, that force bc on giant c right so this uh, that bc force is acting in this direction and that cy force is acting in the upward direction vertically upward right so then if if this giant c is in equilibrium so then the direction of this ac member force should be in this direction so that they should make a close triangle right so if if i draw that ac force right so ac force is in this direction so this uh, ac force is away from this giant c so this means that this ac force is tension force right since it will elongate this ac member so now as we can see that this bc force and bc force magnitude is 2.08 kilonewton similarly this one is cy and similarly this is ac so now we are in this problem we are required to find this force in ac member right since we are not required to find the reaction so we can find this ac so now as we can see that if if i draw a horizontal line here so then this if this bc force is making 60 degree right here with the positive x axis is so if this is 60 degrees so then this angle is 30 degrees right so we can say this whole angle is 90 degrees so then this is 30 degrees so now as we can see this is a right angle triangle and ac is the sine component of this bc so we can say that ac is equal to bc sine of 30 degrees and bc is 2.08 sine of 30 degrees 
So the force in AC member comes out to be 1.04 kilonewton. And if we isolate this AC member from this whole truss, so if this is our AC member, right? So this force is the force of the member on the joint, right? So the, as a reaction, the joint will apply the force in the opposite direction on this member, right? So this is the force applied by the joint on this member. So this means that this uh, AC force will elongate this AC member, right? So this means that this AC force is the tension force, right? So now we know the forces in all the three members of uh, this given truss, right? And in this problem, we are also asked that explain why knowledge of lengths of the member is unnecessary, right? Since we are applying the method of joints to solve this uh, problem, so in method of joints, we only apply the summation of forces equation, right? Since the summation of forces along x is equal to 0 and the summation of forces along y is equal to 0, since we are not applying the moment equation, these two equations are sufficient for the method of joints. So there is no need to have the dimensions of these three members, right? So there is no knowledge of length is required to apply the method of joints.